There is a wonderful story behind this painting of Lady Valerie Susan Muse, who was wife of the very wealthy Sir Henry Muse. The portrait dates back to three years after they were married, when Sir Henry commissioned three portraits of his beautiful wife to be painted by James Abbott McNeil Whistler. Whistler's titles for portraits were always enigmatic, so this one is known as Harmony in Pink and Grey. You can see how big it is when you compare it to the guide's head at lower left. The second portrait, again with an enigmatic title, is known as Arrangement in Black. And the third title we'll never know because Lady Muse was rude to Whistler and so he destroyed the portrait. So what sort of a lady was she if she was rude to an artist? Well, her origins were anything but ladylike. However, since she was of American origins, she spoke a classless and rather exotic form of English. And at the time she met her husband, she was working under the name of Val Rees as a banjo-playing barmaid and part-time prostitute at a dance hall named the Casino de Venise in northern London. Val, at 31 years old, obviously saw a bright and shining future with Sir Henry, who was a mere 22 years old and madly in love with her. Before anyone could question the match, they married in secret. Henry's family went ballistic, but there was nothing they could do except snub her. Despite being snubbed, the flamboyant Lady Muse flaunted her enormous wealth by driving around London in a high phaeton drawn by a pair of zebras. At their huge country house, she made lavish improvements, such as adding a swimming pool and an indoor roller skating rink. In a family photo, first we see Henry, his friends, and a buxom Val after a busy day of slaughter. And in the next, we see Henry, clearly exhausted by all that shooting, lying down with his gun and Valerie behind him, playing soothing banjo music. Domestic bliss. That's a very long introduction to the best part of the story which begins in 1900, when Lady Mew's husband Sir Henry dies and she inherits the entire Mew's estate. At the same time, across England, the news was all about the Boer War in South Africa and the Siege of Ladysmith, where things went horribly wrong because, it was said, the artillery lacked guns. So Lady Muse, never one to falter at offence, immediately ordered and paid for six twelve-pounders on special field carriages to be sent to South Africa, where they became the core of a special gunnery unit. Now another big jump. Ten years later, a Sir Hedworth Lampton returns to England. He'd been at Ladysmith, and his South African command had benefited from her gift of guns. So he called on Lady Muse to say thank you and recount his adventures. She was so taken with him, and that he'd come in person to say thank you, that she immediately made him the sole beneficiary of her will. That is the entire Muse estate and all Sir Hedworth would have to do was change his name to Muse. And six months later, dear, sweet Lady Muse dies, and Sir Hedworth Lampton, now Muse, inherits the lot. And this is a wonderful example of the poetry of life, reminding us, as it should, to always say thank you and it pays to be polite.